As always, welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and this is Tuesday. It is September 12th. Now, I do the same thing in all my shows. I go out hunting every day looking for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. And the grand thing about this hunt, I am not restricted. I can go to any market I want. As long as they're under five bucks, they're considered a penny stock. Now, when I look for these hot penny stocks, I'm doing it by looking at the charts first. I believe in a hot chart over hot news. That's my personal preference. So when I go looking at the charts, I'm looking for a lot of volume coming in, or maybe the price sneaking up underneath a big SMA about ready to break out. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll take my time and go rummaging around through the filings and the press releases, looking for a catalyst, looking for a match to set that chart on fire. When I find a catalyst, then I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks we talk about in this show. And I got three of them to share with you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Ag Eagle Aerial Systems, ticker UAVS. This is a U.S. drone company, to put it in a small box for you. Now, she's got a hot chart. It's an atypical breakout chart. That 200-day SMA has been falling a long time with the price deep underneath it. Well, they finally gotten close. She had a spike breakthrough, come right back down, and now she's right up underneath it, and it's looking like she is about ready to run. Now, the company hasn't got what I would call a direct catalyst. No news that's come out yesterday or today, but they've got great financials, jumped a lot since last year, and they've got lots of things happening. Business is picking up and going on, so everything looks good. Charts are set up, why shouldn't it break out? So UAVS, she finished the day, still climbing after market, at 20.2 cents, a little over 9% gains. Now this is a penny stock on the major exchange, New York Stock Exchange. This comes with benefits. Major exchange penny stocks, you can trade for free. There are no transaction fees, and you can trade them pre-market, after-market. No, you don't need any special training or permission. Just get in there and trade. Only thing you got to remember is it's not a day trade. It's an extended period trade. So you got to change the time period on your order. Outside of that, you can trade pre-market after market. So what does this company do? Well, we're not going to read this description. Now, I know UAVS took over this ticker a long time ago. I don't know how long, but they've never updated their description. But you know I know where to get one. Over here in the most recent press release. Through its three centers of excellence, Ag Eagle is actively engaged in designing and delivering best-in-class flight hardware, that is their drones, sensors, and software that solve important problems for their customers. Founded in 2010, Ag Eagle was originally formed to pioneer the proprietary professional-grade fixed-wing drones and aerial imagery-based data collection along with analytic solutions for the agricultural industry. However, today, Ag Eagle is a leading provider of full-stack drone solutions for customers worldwide in the energy, construction, agriculture, and government verticals, and a whole lot of others. I mean, you can use drones for anything you can think of. I was surprised to hear that they were using them in mines. I mean, you can fly these things down in the ground. They don't have to be up in the air, right? So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, there's a nice increase, about 60% jump, going from 1.5 million up to 2.6 million. Share structure for Ag Eagle. Now, the only thing they tell us here is their outstanding share count. That is about 110 million. Our float is never higher than the outstanding share count and could be considerably less. Financials for Ag Eagle. Well, they took a big jump from 2021. They were roughly at $10 million. We know this is millions because they tell us we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And here in 2022, they virtually doubled that up to $19 million. And they darn sure doubled their profits. Looking at the quarterly, We did take a dip here in their most recent financial, but you can see they're holding steady. They're doing good revenues right now. Taking a look at their balance sheet. There we go. In the bank, they have got $4.3 million cash, total assets, $54 million, and total liabilities, only $11 million. 
So they've got solid financials. They've got good revenues. Assets are strong. Taking a look at those disclosures. The most recent disclosure is an 8K, and this actually has to do with some management changes that they had. Outside of that, we only have the financial, which isn't an only. It's pretty important. That's where all the vital information is about the company. If you want to know about the company, do not go doing searches on Google. Just jump into the most recent financial and you'll get every bit of information that you want. It's all in there. All right, let's take a look at that news now. So I'm not going to go back too far here because we are looking at these to see why they should run. So we're looking at news from uh, the third week of August. We've got two pieces of news here, three, that they are getting the word out there about what they do. They are at trade shows, they are at expos, and they were just on Fox Business Network TV. So they are getting the word out there. Outside of that, in August, they had a deal with Kalu unmanned airships. They equipped themselves with Ag Eagle's Red Edge P multi-spectral sensors. And this is over in Finland. So it may be a U.S. company, but they can work anywhere in the world. And the other piece of news, Ag Eagle launches the new EB Vision drone, now accepting orders from customers worldwide. They have just opened up the doors to take customers. I mean, that's it just happened here uh, September 6th. Now, the new EB Vision that is a single wing drone like all of theirs. I think they have about a half dozen of them. I really don't know the differences between them. Maybe they're different sizes, probably do different things. But this is the one that they are now pushing. So I see a lot going on here. The revenues are steady and strong. They're doing business. They're out there spreading the word. And the chart is set up for a breakout. Matter of fact, she's doing it right now. The 200 was at 20 and a half cents, and our price right now is 20.2 cents. She is trying to break out. I am revved and ready to chart this stock for you. This is UAVS Ag Eagle Aerial Systems. We're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. I got this when I signed up at TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we're looking at a one-day, one-year chart. Give us an idea of the 52-week high and low. Our high was back in October of last year, 65 cents, and we just hit our low in August of 15 cents. Now, I'm going to draw some resistances in here so we have an idea of what's going on. I'm crossing this one right here at 6 cents. Let's come on down to our neck of the woods down here. We definitely got one right there at about 21.8 cents. We got another one sitting here at 28.4 cents and a really strong resistance right there at about uh, 35, 36. Let's come on down to our six month, four hour view now. All right, looks like we hit that high of six cents right there. She bounced off of that, came under her 200, and she has been falling for a very long time, hitting that low of 15 cents in August. And she's just been going sideways, not doing a whole heck of a lot of anything. But then we had what I like to call the directional intentional spike. It pushed right through the 200 all the way up and came right back to where it started from. No intention of getting up there now. It just put a flag up there and says, hey, 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 this is where I'm going. Pay attention. So when I see a nice spike go all the way up and back down to where it started from, then I start to watch for a breakout. She came down to her 50. She bounced off of that, and she's been climbing for the last 24 hours, and she is literally right up underneath that 200 right now. It is at 20.5, and our price is 20.2. Volume is getting stronger these last couple of days. It's had some spikes here off and on, and our oscillators are real strong right now. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, read it the same way you read the MACD. It's climbing, and the MACD is climbing with a lot of green bars accumulating. And our RSI has been pushing up for like three days, maybe even four, going from 43 up to almost 69. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So 20 days ago, we were at 23 cents, hit that low of 15 cents. It was short lived. She bounced right back up, but she continued that downtrend, then snuck across the board here, just walking towards the 200 as the 200 is falling. And when they met, 
She took off. She got very excited breaking this 22 cent resistance, came back down onto the 200 and she's bounced off of that and she's climbing on her nine day SMA very nicely with all the other SMAs following closely behind her. So she's not too far from them. Oscillators, still looking good. PPO is climbing up just like our MACD and our RSI is at 63. Five day, five minute. So we are rolling our 200 uphill right now. She's been hanging around our 50 day SMA. We are right up underneath this support at 21.8 cents. She's going to work her way up to that. Now when she hits that, she's probably going to wrestle with it. She may wrestle with it underneath. She may get up on top and jump up and down on it. So don't think the first time she gets through it is when she's going to run. Wait for her to test it. When she starts to pull away after a testing, that's when you should probably consider it. Oscillators, well, you know, the chart looks good, but the oscillators, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got a recovery going on right there. It's a little one, but it's happening. Yes, MACD as well, and our RSI is climbing. It came all the way from 42 up to 59. So actually, it is pushing up right now, not with a lot of fervor. But UAVS is set up for a breakout. She's got good revenue. She's doing business. And she comes out with news regular. I think it's worth putting on your watch list. Our next stock is a hot penny stock. This is ticker YCRM, Ulings Ice Cream Corporation. Now, I covered this company way back when they first came on the market. I think it was 2019. This is a company that's been around for a long time. They just haven't been public. Well, here recently, on August 25th, they put out a filing. And on the 29th, they followed it up with the news press. Both days were catalysts for this stock. Launching it over the 200, and she has been climbing. The news is hot. Now, I'm a little confused here, and I'll explain why as we go along. Yuling's Ice Cream, ticker YCRM, finished the day at 0033. She was climbing earlier today, but she took a dip. It's been the first dip in five days. She dropped about 3%, but after market hours, she is already starting to push up again. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She does have a transfer agent verified, but we don't see a verified profile here. Now, that's not a deal breaker, but we would like to see it sooner than later. Now, they tell us that Ulings is a shell risk. This means that she's in business, but she's not making any money, which kind of surprises me. I'm going to read the description first, and then I'm going to tell you what I know. Aura Sync is a food brand development company focused on acquiring and growing well-established food brands. Our first acquisition are the operating assets of Ulings Ice Cream Corporation, developed by an American businessman, Frank D. Euling. Now, the fact of the matter is, Euling started off as a beer company way back when, a hundred years ago. Then came along Prohibition, and they couldn't sell their beer anymore. So they became a dairy company and started making ice cream. Then the Prohibition ended, they continued with the beer and the ice cream. Somewhere along the line, they quit doing the ice cream and just stuck with the beer. Then they came online with this company and I thought, well, here comes the ice cream again. Well, we haven't seen it and we're not seeing any revenue. So I'm not real sure what's going on with those products. So what was the relative volume around the company's big news today? Nice jump, over 100%, going from 24.5 million to over 48 million shares today. Share structure for Ulings. Woo, they got a lot of authorized shares, 2.5 billion. Authorized shares are shares they have in the bank. That is the maximum amount they have. It's the most they can put on the market. They can also use them as currency. They can make deals with them, cut a deal with somebody and give them a bunch of shares instead of money. So outstanding shares. We've only got 359 million out there right now. Whew. The insiders, looks like they own a nice even 60 million shares, leaving us almost 300 million shares for our float. It's a pretty high float. Financials for Euling. Well, that's the sad part here. There is nothing going on. Back in 2019, they had $83,000 dropping to $57,000, $3,000, and in 2022, zip. Looking at our quarterly, 
zippity doodah across the board. We got nothing going on. So where are their products? What are they doing with them? Are they done with them? I mean, I just looked up Euling's beer on Google. It's still there. So who's selling it? I am so confused. All right, jumping over to our disclosures. Yes, we have an 8K here. That is the one that came out on the 25th. It is hot, but we're going to look at it from the news vantage point. And then you've got their most recent financial that came out on the 14th of August. If you want to know what's going on, jump on into there. Taking a look at that news then. So we have got two pieces of news here, and both of them are good. We're going to read the bottom one. Euling announces letter of intent for a business merger with Texas-based music business software company. Well, what's that got to do with food? Aura said that they were dealing with companies that were in food. So I'm not sure how this is all fitting together. The other piece of news we're not going to take a look at, Euling's Ice Cream Settles last convertible promissory notes with holders. They've gotten rid of their debt. They're in a good position. Now, maybe they needed to do that to make this deal with this Texas-based music business software company. So what do they tell us about this deal? Well, this news came out August 29th. They say that Euling's Ice Cream Corporation announced today that it has executed a binding letter of intent with Pickle Jar Holdings, a Texas-based music entertainment software company for a proposed merger. Now, this is important. The entity resulting from the proposed transaction will continue to carry on the business of Pickle Jar as the content-driven media network and live entertainment technology service provider, unifying every touch point of the fan experience for emerging artists, mid-sized venues, and global brands. The proposed transaction includes changing the company name to Pickle Jar Entertainment. Are they getting out of food completely? Following the closing of the business combination, Pickle Jar's co-founder Jeffrey James will continue as chief executive officer and co-founder Christian Barsky will continue as president. Eulings will appoint new members of the board of directors and new executive officers to replace theirs. Sounds like it's a change of operations and a change of management. Sounds like a takeover to me. One business is gone. It just didn't work and I have no clue why. They tell us here that Euling anticipates announcing additional details in the coming weeks. No guarantee there, but that's what they say. So we've got a, a it sounds like a takeover, not a merger. Oris was dealing with food companies. Euling was a food company, beer and ice cream. And I don't see either one of them making them any money. Though I do see one of them on the market and I still am scratching my head. Who's selling it? Who's getting that money? So this is the catalyst. And the chart is hot right now. We're waiting on the news. I don't expect this to run until the news comes out, but it is worth watching. Let's go take a look at that chart. Ice cream may be cold, but this chart is hot. This is ticker YCRM, Euling's Ice Cream Corporation. Now we are looking at a one day, one year chart. Our 52 week high appeared in September of last year, virtually three cents. We had a 52 week low in May of 0005. Now we had a nice run here back in December, jumping from 008 up to 025. That is a 300% run right there. Now I have marked this run off with a resistance on the bottom, the top, and dead center because I believe these will come into play when our price gets back up into those zones. Coming down to our six month, four hour view. Five months ago, we hit a high of almost a penny. That was in February. She fell very fast and hard down to this low. Then she just went sideways riding on this 50-day SMA until the 200 got close. She tapped it once, came down, broke it, came back down underneath, but no lower than where she started. That's important. Then she rolls around and she took off. She started down here at 0007 and went all the way up to... 0047, you're looking at about 600% gains right there, folks. Volume has been strong for the last 10 days. Oscillators are very strong, though we are seeing a cool off on our RSI, but it's still way up in the overbought at 82. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's our tap on the 200 on the one hour, our breakout 
looks like the four hour chart and then she took off. She did have a nice bump from yesterday to this morning, but then she fell. She hit a high of 0047 and she fell all the way down here. It looks to be about 0036 right now, maybe 37. Our SMAs look good. She is sitting on top of the nine day SMA and all of the others are following right behind her. Oscillators have cooled off a bit, as you would expect. Looking at that five day, five minute. Now that's not a bad chart. We've got a low down here of triple zero seven, and then we've got double zero four seven. Six hundred percent run right there, folks. She's come back down, keeping well over fifty percent, and you can see we've got a nice bounce after market here. She's put herself on top of the fifty. Looks like she's ready to continue going. And look at our oscillators. Don't they say that this is coming back around across that pink and get on top? We just had our crossover on our MACD. Green bars are accumulating, and look at that RSI, jumping from 37 up to 60. It is looking good, folks. YCRM, used to sell beer, used to sell ice cream. Doesn't look like they've been selling anything, and now they're getting into the music business? <laughs> I really don't have a lot more information. Do some more due diligence. In the meantime, throw YCRM on your watch list. She's doing a lot right now. If you're like me and you really like stocks that have hot charts, you're going to love this one. This is ticker XOS. This is Zos Inc. It is an atypical breakout chart that broke out today, but is set back up. She did her initial breakout with a bounce from 30 cents to 55 cents with a very long wick. Came all the way back down right up underneath the 200 and she is sitting there right now. And she just came out with a huge piece of news that is very exciting. Zos Inc. finished today at 35 and a half cents with over 14% gains. She too is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So what does Zos do? But jumping over into a press release, they tell us that Zos is a leading technology company, fleet service provider, and original equipment manufacturer of class five through class eight battery electric vehicles. Zos vehicles and fleet management software are purpose built for medium and heavy duty commercial vehicles that travel on last mile back to base routes of up to 270 miles or less per day. The company leverages its proprietary technologies to provide commercial fleets with battery electric vehicles that are easier to maintain and more cost efficient on a total cost of ownership basis than their internal combustion engine counterparts. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Yeah, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Nice increase, jumping from roughly a half a million shares up to 2.2 million. You're looking at over a 400% increase in her volume today. Share structure for Zos. They don't give us a lot of information here. They tell us the outstanding share count is 176 million. We know the float isn't going to be any higher than that, and we're praying it's going to be significantly lower. Looking at the financials for the company. Wow, huge leaps and bounds. From 2020 to 2021, she virtually doubled her revenues, going from 2.6 million to 5 million. But look at 2022, going from 5 million to 36 million. Wow! But don't get too excited. Look at the bottom. The more money they make, the more money they lose. Holy cow! Let's take a look at that quarterly. Well, they had some very strong quarters last year, 9 million, 11 million, 8 million, and now they've dropped down to 4.6 and 4.7 million, and they're still losing money. Somebody needs to tweak this formula real quick. Let's take a quick look at that balance sheet, see what we got over here. All right, in the bank, cash, they've got over $38 million. Not bad. Total assets, $189 million. Total liabilities are only 45 million. So assets wise, they're doing real good. They're making strong revenues, but they're running at a loss. So they do need to tweak something there. Taking a look at her disclosures. Right, we had a bunch of Form 4s that were filed August 14th. Form 4s are whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. 
Now, we're most interested in when they buy or sell them. They can get them in a lot of different ways. Well, these are all sales, but don't worry. They weren't big. Let me give you an example here. This is the chief operating officer. He just sold 3,000 shares for 42 cents. That's not very much money, folks. I doubt he even could pay his mortgage with it. And what's most important here is look how many shares he's got. 27 million. And he only sold 3,000. And that's really what you got going on over here with the rest of these Form 4s. They're all small sales. Nothing to be concerned about. So let's take a look at that news now. So we are going back here to the start of August. The company secured a purchase order for 30 trucks from a repeat customer. They are purchasing a total of 200 vehicles. They have added 30 more to it. At the end of August, the company demos their power of the Exos Hub across multiple use cases. Now, as far as I can tell, the Exos Hub is, well, to make it easy, it's a gas station that gives you electricity. They build them wherever you want them and you can use them for your fleets. And they came up with a program here for their customers that if they will build a Zobes Hub, they can get a discount of $160,000. So that goes to show you how expensive a Zob Hub can be. Then we've got two pieces of news here I do want to jump into. The first one came out September 7th. Zos revolutionizes commercial vehicle updates with over-the-air capabilities. Zos is proud to announce the successful completion of its first launch of over-the-air updates to its 2023 Zos SV step vans. This marks a major milestone in the commercial electric vehicle industry as full vehicle over-the-air updates have traditionally been limited to consumer electric vehicles. Now this is interesting. This allows Zos to make a variety of updates to the vehicle including new vehicle features, powertrain tuning, and charging enhancements. The same telematics control units that enable over-the-air updates also to allow for over-the-air diagnostics. This allows Zos to quickly and more efficiently address charging or operation issues. I find that very interesting that they're not just updating your electronics, they're updating your car. That is wild. And this is the big news, folks. This is hot. This came out September 12th. Zos Inc. is pleased to announce that it has been contracted as a vendor by the state of California. This approval allows California state and local agencies to easily purchase electric step vans from Zos using a streamlined state contract. California state and local agencies now have access to special state of California discount pricing for Zos step vans. Agencies that purchase a step van under this contract are able to purchase chargers directly from Zos to further expedite the electrification of their fleets, as we were just talking about. So now all of California that is trying to go electric hard and fast is now selling these. I mean, they're not selling them, but they're selling them to their customers saying, we have approved these. These are on our to buy list and you can get them at a good price. And I think that is going to be great for business. Now let's go look at this chart. It too is hot. I told you, you like this one. Yes, we are looking at Zos. This is ticker XOS, one year, one day chart. We got a high a year ago in September of $1.65, and then we got a low in June of about 21 cents. Jumping down to that six month, four hour view, it was almost six months ago we had a high of $1.19, and she fell fast and furious all the way down to this low in June. She bounced off of that low, breaking the 200. Now, in my opinion, this should have been, could have been a good breakout but it wasn't, it just fizzled out. And I don't know why it just laid on this 200 for many a days. And then all of a sudden she took off going from 37 cents up to 66 cents. And I have no clue why. I also have no clue why she fell going from 66 down to 27. And here she has just been going sideways, tagged the 200 once, that was nice bounced off the 50 and today she showed exactly what she wants to do. She jumped from 30 cents all the way up here to 53 cents and has fallen back here to about 35 cents, right up underneath the 200. Now what's most exciting about this is how far she jumped before she came back down. 
The higher she goes, the more she tugs on these SMAs and pulls them up. She needs to have that 200 flat. Well, she did better than flat. Look at it. It's actually curving up right now. So in my opinion, I think this is going to climb tomorrow. That's just my feeling. Volume is getting stronger. Osculators are looking good. Our PPO and our MACD are both pushing up with a lot of green bars here. And our RSI is up at 63, pushing up as well. 20 day, one hour view. Well, she was way under the 200 there for quite a while. It was only about six days ago she got on top of the 200, laid on that for a little bit, and now she's pushed off. There was that big jump coming back down, and she's on top of her nine-day SMA. Everything is looking nice here. Osculators are strong, but they have a little bit of cooling down, but nothing I'm concerned with. Five-day, five-minute. All right, she's growing really slow right now, but she is growing. She's on top of her 200 predominantly. She does dip under it a little bit. She's bouncing off of it. That shows you that she sees it as a support, a floor she can trust. And she is floating above it right now on her 50-day SMA. And all of our osculators are pretty planted and plain. They're all right in the middle, kind of going sideways. But looking at the four-hour chart, you can see something is going on. I like Zos. Yeah, she needs to tweak her financials, but her assets are strong, and she just got California as a customer. The whole state. Zos, don't you think it belongs on your watch list? Hope you aren't too bummed out that it didn't give you any cannabis stocks today. Cannabis is still running. Some are cooling off. New ones are taking off. ACB was very impressive today. But the stocks I'm sharing with you, they're running on their own rights. They've all got catalysts and they've all got hot charts. What they need now is a little more due diligence. So don't let me down. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.